we have a friend, it's playing out before our eyes. He's traditionally in finance and, um, you know, he had the money, he had the benefits, he was getting bonuses, he's got a six-figure salary, he's got everything expensed, the food, the wine, it's all there. And he's like, that's not it. All right, today, it is episode 79 of the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we talk about entrepreneurship, self-development, and challenging norms. Today, we have a book club for you. This is a good one. It's Drive by Daniel Pink. I don't know what I read. <laughs> right out of the gate, admitting everything. Come on, you get... You, Daniel Pink, <laughs> let me... Can I ask a relatable question? Because I'm sitting here, I don't think I wiped my butt enough. I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't think I wiped uh, good enough. I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I was debating earlier that little gum joke that I did with you, doing it on the pod. <laughs> no. Okay. We're talking about Drive by Daniel Pink. Does it have a, a subtitle? I didn't even look that up. I don't know. Something about motivation. <laughs> Look, you, you came to me this morning and you're like, there's only one takeaway I got from this book. I did not need 300 pages or six hours how long this thing is. I'm blocking. Watch this on YouTube. Read a review. I'm here. We're talking about... (laughs) Don't write one. Read one. (laughs) Read a review. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing things from the everybody, what everybody is saying episode. Um, Yeah, there's this thing with these little five-hour Audible books that... I'm sorry, Daniel Pink, but I think you can read the intro and the conclusion, and he laid out like 20 tips at the end, Mm -hmm. and I think you could be good enough. Yeah, that ending, that was a good little summary chapter. That's, mm-hmm. This is actually intro, conclusion, you got most of it. Literally, and, and when I texted you, I was like, this is one of those books. It's not even an 80-20, it's like a 99-1. You know, you can read 1% of the book, get 99% of what he's saying. And I think it would have hit really hard in a blog post. Maybe you did one as well. Or it a was, podcast. Or a podcast. Boom! But it, it, it was a great read. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I just thought the one point, which we're about to talk about, which is do things that that have intrinsic value um was hit over and over and over again motivation intrinsic motivation sorry um i guess they're intrinsically valuable you're let me here's the here's the thesis you're only going to do anything now in 2020 or i don't know in the last 5 years he wrote this book if the thing gives you intrinsic motivation no sorry if your intrinsic motivation gives you the drive to do that thing. one point and we can't even summarize it <laughs> belky who should read this book before we get into it You know, I don't know. I really don't know because I've all I all I all all I've had for like four or five years is this intrinsic yeah. motivation. So it's a lot of confirmation bias going on. Mm. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking how we hate on people. And, not and hate, not hate. People think we hate on people. We don't actually yes. hate them. But like the people that are just. Being cogs in the machine, which isn't a bad thing, mm-hmm. but being it without... I know who this is for. Sorry, okay. yeah, finish right, your point. No, no, no. no finish I don't your need... point. Why, why should I complete thoughts when you have thoughts? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great... I don't know if it's rhetorical. I'm not going to answer it because I want you to Just finish Just tell me point. what you were thinking. You already cut me I think off. this book's for managers, mostly. Mm. Um, managers that expect their employees to give that perfect No, input, no. Output. It's a two-way street. It is because you you yeah. you read it and you're like I'm an employee, which is everyone else, and they're like, why aren't we doing these things? Like that was actually one of the questions at the end because Daniel Pink's like, oh, here's some book club questions to think about. It's like, well, in what areas of life? And I guess we're skipping a little bit, but is motivation 2.0, which is like mm-hmm. rewards and punishment? How has that crept into your life and maybe pushed you off a path of excellence? with uh, motivation 2.0. So like, for example, going to school, they use grades and grades are just your, your reward or your punishment for knowing the material. But what happened to like, I used to love math and then I got like a 60 for my first exam in college and I was like, well, I suck at math, so I'm going to quit. That and they don't translate. We're going to talk about the two types of motivation because again, that was the whole book. But, but those things don't translate. You could get A's on your math exams or C's Let's say you got A's, you've mastered it, but have you learned math? Not really. And I think what I really enjoyed about this book was it's, it's about this process of like wanting to learn forever. I think so many people go to college, no, go to 
primary school, secondary school, and college, and then that's it. They're like, I've made it. I've yeah, done my what's, learnings. What's that? I don't get that at all. I, well, that's what it says. There are two types of people. Going back to my original point, which somehow got cut off. I don't know how. But we hate on people that are just cogs in the machine without thinking about what motivates them. We don't them. hate them. Listen to me. We're just confused. The mindless, yeah. the mindless yeah. cog. I hate on the mindless cog because you got to stop and think. Because there are two types of people, at least according to Daniel Pink. You have, well, usually they'd say like type A personality, type B. But he separates it into type I and type E. Mm -hmm. So intrinsically motivated people, which is like us, like you doing Dunbar right now. I tell you all the time, like this is the lowest percent chance. It's like a lottery ticket. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I would never play the lottery. But, but even just everything I do, it's all intrinsic motivation. Right, right. I you get paid banging next around, to nothing. Sewing your, yeah. Just, yeah. You're practically homeless. For all intents and purposes, <laughs> you're not that far off. But you love life. And there yeah. are a lot of people that have the dopest homes that hate life. Yeah. And those are the types of people that tend to fall in the E category of like, they just work for the paycheck. Wait, did you say what it was? E is extrinsically. Oh, extrinsic. Yeah. So type I and type E. So I, we just love type I people. And you can be, can be working for a machine. You can be an employee. But it's got to be for a company whose service you like. Who yeah. Kind of, there are different aspects that we'll get into of drive and what motivates you. You know where some of that intrinsic motivation comes from? I was driving with our buddy David yesterday. We were going into the city a bit from, mm -hmm. from our apartment. And it was a beautiful blue day, maybe 40 degrees. And it was like 11 in the morning. And I turned to David and I said, I fucking love life. Mm -hmm. You know why I love life, David? Because it's 11 in the morning. I haven't reported to anybody today. I'm doing what I want. I don't have a lot. That's okay. And then, and then we looked at the Sears Tower. Oh, this is really dramatic. We looked at the Sears Tower and there were just like a few wispy white clouds behind it. And we're like, that's amazing. Not enough people get to drive downtown at 11 a.m. in the morning, look at the Sears Tower, and literally like stop and smell the roses. That's where the intrinsic motivation comes from. Life's beautiful. People have created a lot of masterpieces. I mean, I, I literally... What are the two types of motivation? No, 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 no. Really uh, quick. Let me add on. Yeah. Me add Where on were you? Before. I was getting a COVID I, test. Where? Yesterday? <clears throat> I don't yeah. know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But every morning, when I'm riding my little bike in, I'm just playing some nice tunes, riding through the park. When we come back, we see the Sears Tower. Just like what you said, it's like, I'm just so happy every day. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to rub this into like people who aren't face or whatever, rub it in. But like, it's possible. It's possible. Like, let, let me also add, like, I've had some of, there are dark days in between these awesome days. And I, oh, I've, you saw me the <laughs> other night. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you got to get more sunlight. <laughs> um, and I, I've definitely had, had my bouts of darkness, but, but we've said this a million times. Gary V says it's like, if the five, 10 people that you really love and spend your time with around you, if you wake up and they're healthy and it's nice outside, what's, what's, <laughs> what, what, what are you so mad about? You know? Yeah. I like it a lot. So here we go. I, I mean, I'm from the manager perspective. Yeah. Also kind of employee or like. Yeah, you're good client. culture. I'm, you had I'm good kind of culture. I don't no, know what's don't going know. on with your companies now, but back in the day when we used to work together, good culture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who knows? But this is like the book that I, I want to just give to my team. Everyone reads it and they're like, there are a lot of takeaways and maybe we'll get into it. But one of them is like, have a culture of anyone can bring up red flags, like a red flag mechanism. It's like, oh, boy, you want something, you can bring it up and that's just the culture. Like culture is really cool to me. Some people don't care about it. Like my dad, not as much. I talked to him about this book and he's like, I passed out. Does does he have many employees? A few. A few. Huh. But it's just like some people want want like a cool culture and a team stuff, and some don't. Um, I, I want people that are engaged. That's partly why I like this book so much, because I'm like, we've we have this remote team and it's traditionally kind of tough to have motivation and like in this role there's there's a lot of tasks and stuff like that, but I don't want it to feel like this is my job. I clock in. I go on the assembly line, produce all this content, and clock out. Like I don't want that at all. So everything that can help me figure out how to crack the code and help us figure out the code. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it hinders you in the long run too. Like, um, 
just lost my train of thought. Yeah, these are getting boring. All right, so. No, 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 no. Is this too no, deep? No, no. Um, I wanted to talk about Atlassian. What, what I wanted to say is, yeah. is, is, is actually better things end up coming out of that mm. looser culture. And Atl- Atlassian was one example Daniel, Daniel Pink spoke about. But what, they had one day a week or one day a month where they were tasked with building something completely unrelated to what they were doing at work. The only rule was that they delivered something. Called the FedEx. The FedEx day. Why? Because FedEx has a 24-hour turnaround. Oh, cool. Cool. The order package. Yeah, and I don't know. I was like, I, I try and do that in my afternoons where I do like something so removed from like the work I do in the computer with, with the notion that I would still deliver something so that I stay motivated in the long run. And I think like you're saying, if, if you're a cog and you're just doing tasks and you're, you're playing by the rules and you wake up and you clock in at nine and you edit videos till five, um, that gets really boring after a while. That's what I was thinking because we'll just, at some point we're going to have some sort of outline that goes no. with the book. But here's my, my thought process is like, all right, what if we took Atlassian and we were like, all right, one day a week, say it's Friday. I even wrote it on the top, Funky Friday. Mm-hmm. What if we had Funky mm-hmm. Friday and it's just create some funky, cool anything? Ideally, not related to work at all. And then maybe that just generates a cool creative idea. And now you bring it back and incorporate it in the editing process. Maybe not. Maybe it just keeps you excited to work. Yeah, like what would you do? Because I think Atlassian was kind of software-y. So they were actually like building things. Are you saying like Funky Friday, just like do something different. Create a a cool edit edit or create a cool picture, whatever you want to do. Painting. I I don't care. But just like something where your creative energy and there's just like no pressure on it being awesome in any way just present it and like we'll just talk about it i guess it'd be tough on friday maybe end of the day whatever but like it's it's an interesting idea but then my concern was like oh well we kind of promised our client all this stuff and if we're losing 20 percent of the week how are yes, we gonna do that but output? that's that what book did that come from uh code base camp where they they don't work on fridays and the exact same amount of stuff gets done monday through thursday yeah, I guess you just, you find a way. It's Parkinson's. It's Parkinson's it law, baby. Back. Everything <laughs> comes back to Parkinson's law. If you law. know you got four, yeah, you'll figure out a system. Yeah, but there you go. All right, maybe we'll try it. I don't know. I don't want to promise I'll anything. I'll even but. say, like, because I keep my afternoons from, like, three to five-ish, where, yeah, you probably see me. I'm just walking around, messing around. I get the same amount of work done from 10 a.m. to 3 and from 6 to 8 in the evening. It's just Parkinson's. I don't know. You, you run into trouble when you... Well, like this book. This book, I started it like three hours ago, and I'm like, well, I got to finish you gotta it. You got to finish it. So you just and sat I had an and hour finished call. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can't be taking calls. But what happens with... Not everyone can like do Parkinson's. Some people just miss deadlines, slack, Dude, bad communication. I'm realizing maybe people got to stop piping me up, but they're like, you just get shit done. And I think I'm the laziest person, but then... I guess you've got, you've set up the system to get shit done. I know, done. I know. It's just, I don't like, it's just weird, dude. Like people don't get shit done. <laughs> people don't get shit done. Oh, we were talking about this the other day, right? Okay. So maybe this is, I don't know how. Uh, All right, wait, really quick. Are you talking about um, colleagues at your other job? They're saying you just get. You, yeah, like you they can, have these ideas and they just don't execute on them. Like kind of you in general, David brings a lot of that execution. Energy. Right. But like. For example, you look at my Instagram story. Now it's day 144. It'll probably be 160, 180 by the time this comes out. But the idea is like you just get started and then stuff like the innovation stack just builds. It, yeah. And then next thing you know, like everyone's like, how did you do that? Right. And, like, it and started- what I see is I see like you sit in one, two meetings a day and then you work alongside your team in the evening. Which is no, I'm, I'm saying that's a good thing. But but that means the people that are piping you up for getting stuff done must get just like nothing. I know. Done. I'm thinking like, what the <laughs> hell are you guys doing? I, I don't. I don't know. It's easy. Just give yourself like three things to do in a day. Put them, write them down and then do them. And at the end of the week, you'll have done 25 things. And it's super easy. The world confuses me every podcast. I get more <laughs> and more confused. It seems simple. And I'd, I, I think people they make like a to-do list with 15 days, 15 things to do in a day. 
And then they just kind of run in place all week and maybe get like three or four of those things done. And you're like, I'm a one thing person. And then those one things all compound. This world's a crazy place. All right. Well, let this me talk about crazy this book. All right. Uh, we probably lost everyone. Holy no. shit. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. All I know is this. 60,000 years ago, right? We're going around in the savannah. Back then, what was your motivation, Belky? Food. Food. Food and don't be food. That's yeah. it. That is it. This Just is motivation 1.0. 1.0 is survival. <laughs> Just don't die. All right? That's super basic. And we do that for a long ass time. Until a couple hundred years ago, we start having enough to not die every other week. So then we create back. We create this little thing called Taylorism. And let's, let's build these kids up. So that they come into the factories just ready to, to hear the whistle and they get to work and they hear the whistle and they stop for the bell in the school. What works well there? Motivation 2.0. And Belky, we already talked about it, but do you know what it is? Motivation 2.0 is maximize reward, minimize penalties, right? Punishment, yeah. Punishment. Yeah. Basically, do some input, get some output. Yeah. Good. Reward. Bad. Punish. Like a little dog. And I mean, that works. That works if we're all just dogs or like just cogs but, in the machine. But we're highly creative human beings, yeah, yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So things start changing. I'd say, I don't know where the pin, where we, we draw it, but maybe in like the 60s, people start like, you get it, the factory mentality starts no, to die no, down. No, 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 no. It's got to be like 2009. It's got to be the information age. Maybe, but like computers started coming around. Dot com bubble. I think maybe. before the 2000s. Like basically, we are one of the first generations to truly be able to work on motivation 3.0. Mm -hmm. I love the little software thing and shit. Oh, it's perfect. Information age, software. Yeah. Software enabled us to have uh, motivation 3.0. So, what is that? That is exactly what Belki said intrinsic motivation. That this idea that people in the past, they used to hate work. Like it wasn't enjoyable to do work. So you needed to, to reward them or punish them for them to get shit done. Today, that's not the case. Today, you can do podcasts. You can do content, whatever you want to do. You can create a company that fulfills you just doing it. It's fun to do it. Like I, I am literally every Sunday, I am so excited because on Monday, I Monday's come in here. Lit. We come in here and we work. It's Monday's fucking lit. dope. I love Monday. Well, we have a friend. It's playing out before our eyes. He's traditionally in finance. I'm not going to name names. No, I'm not talking about eyes. Um, no, he's, I know you're talking. Oh, he's traditionally in finance. And, um, you know, he had the money. He had the benefits. He was getting bonuses. He's got a six-figure salary. He's got everything expensed, the food, the wine. It's all there. And he's like, it, that's not it. That, I, he, just, he was getting no sense of fulfillment from any of that. And I think that's a recurring theme now is as we move into the, the, the next decade. That's why people, I think, like, for example, IES and other people in finance, they're like, well, we already got all our bases. We're, like, we're not going to die. We, we get money. We can do whatever we want. And then they're like, well, I guess the next step is family. Like, because that's going to bring the purpose. They're searching mm -hmm. for this meaning and there just isn't one in work, but there can be one. And so this, this whole book is like, how do we bring that to work? Because not only is it going to create employees that are more excited about stuff, they're going to do a lot better than using any sort of the motivation 2.0 tactics from before. Oh, you know what I really like too? Yeah, th that and uh, he said something about like a kid, like you pay a kid to take out the trash, they're never going to do it for free again. Mm. It's the same thing with like money and bonuses in... Uh, what does he say? Motivation, or what's the 2.0 thing? What, reward and punishment? No, is it called motivation 2.0? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like very... Can't keep it, track? <laughs> no, there's too many words. It's, it's if then, right? Right. If you do this, then you get that paycheck, or then you get that bonus. And it should be, it should be now that. Hmm. Now you did this thing. I don't know how that works. Now that you did this, you get that. Oh, you get that. Okay. Um, yeah. But it should, be, it should be random and not on paper and unexpected and a surprise. So that that, that reward has nothing to do with your work. And no, it, it was a cool one. 
related to that? Look at me cutting you off now. Yes. They, there was this one company, I forget the name, but they, they enabled their employees to at any time give another employee a yeah. $50 bonus. It's like, hey, fucking awesome job on that project. Like, thanks for helping out. Here's 50 bucks. Yeah. Like, that's really cool. And granted, I don't think, I don't think many companies do that. It's probably got a lot of weird stuff, especially with smaller companies. Like only one employee gets all the money. And I, I don't know. It's, it, it's just interesting, different approaches. And I think that's, that's the main idea. Okay. Take this example. Mm-hmm. I like this example. 1945. Yes. We got this dude oh, named Dunker. Yeah. Dunker comes in with this little experiment. I mean, there are a lot of experiments. Uh, so I don't know which one you're thinking. But this one has to do with what I talked to you earlier about. A. What is it called? I don't book, know. What... Matchbook. A matchbook. Oh. You get a matchbook. Then you get a candle. And you get a box of tax. Okay. Now, the objective, you have a wall right next to it. The objective is you have to have this candle lit, but the wax can't hit the table. So picture like, a, if you're watching on YouTube, I guess it makes sense. But like, there's a table, there's a wall. Somehow, the candle's wax can't hit the table. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't know the exact constraints. It's got to be like elevated. Okay, I don't I don't know remember what it was, but basically the idea is like how do you do this? Okay, and everyone looks at it, and like oh I, I don't know maybe like uh, stick a tack through the candle and whatever the tack's not long enough so it can't go. Maybe like get some of the wax and stick it to the wall. That didn't work. Then finally, some creative thinkers and oh this is the difference. Oh my god, I'm telling this so poorly. Basically, okay. They, well, really quick, was this in the book? Yeah, yeah. So this gets back to our our consuming books at lightning speeds argument. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so you only get one takeaway from the book. But the great thing is when you give me that takeaway, I'm going to know what you're talking about because I know the overarching er- narrative in the book. You know what he also said at the end? How good conversation is. He's like, go out, bring this to your book club, mm. talk about it, converse. That's how you like cement ideas but anyway here it is okay so he basically the experiment was we're gonna give you yeah you can't pick that i tried before (laughs) the idea is we're gonna give you like ten dollars if you can figure this out if you figure this out then you get ten dollars oh is this at the beginning i think it's at the beginning and so everyone was like super focused they tried all these different things with the wax sticking it it just doesn't work but then with another group they're like no just just do it like no no dollar yeah and what happened is they were the most creative because they were just curious. They're like, how do, we, how do we figure this out? They ended up playing with the tax. Then they took the tax out of the box and they tacked the box to the wall and put the candle there. So now that candle's elevated. It's, it's just whatever. Any wax that comes down isn't going to get on the table. They pass. And so that's the main idea is just when you're trying to incentivize people for these creative right brain tasks, it just doesn't work. Not only does it not work, but it works worse, worse than no incentive at all. And that's kind of like what you said with paying. Well, not really, but like if you're paying somebody to take out the trash or to do something that they like, like for example, if you love math or art or something, and it's like, I'll give you 10 bucks if you get an A on this exam or create a dope art piece, it's going to be less creative. It's just going to destroy any motivation for them going forward. So it's, it's like we have to completely reject 2.0. For all these higher level jobs that now we have in the 21st century. Which is really hard because our parents are pushing 2.0 so hard because that was their world. Mm. I think we got to tell them, hey guys, 3.0 is here and it's here to stay. What, what intrinsically motivates you? <laughs> Eyebrows raised. Hey, hey. Oh, here we go. Here well, we go. You don't answer my questions. Well, this, this gets into the book. It's like, all right, how do we... How do we Create this intrinsic motivation. Oh, uh, yeah. Comfort. Okay. Three steps. You remember them? Or you go too fast. You go too fast. But I will say, this is when I, I texted you that, that story you were just going over. He was just riddling through a bunch of different studies. And I was like, well, the answer is just intrinsic motivation. Yeah, they all prove the I same just don't. Point. Yeah, I don't like, like when you pay someone to do something, and numbers and they associate with being shitty. Like, you're rewarding them because it's shitty. Yeah. So now they're like, oh, okay, well. Maybe I shouldn't want to do this naturally. Right. And there goes all the childhood curiosity. But you get has. better innovation. You get better everything if there's no monetary incentive and people just want to learn. Mm-hmm. That's, but what, what are your three points? What are Daniel's three points? 
That's if you paid attention, this is literally the bulk of the book, but you have no idea. All right, point number there was one. seven at one point. No, that's not how <laughs> three. <laughs> autonomy. Oh, okay. Autonomy. Okay. So this this is I where like you come autonomy. <laughs> and so you gotta let people decide their work. They gotta figure out what they're doing, who they're doing it with, when they're doing it, how they're doing I'll, it. I'll give you an example, Pat. Okay. Um, every morning for, for Dunbar, I've set up our two minute Two minute to do's. Mm-hmm. And the rules are like, okay, I more or less run the ship. David more or less runs the ship. We could tell everyone what they got to do during the day. That's not going to work. So I'm like, in the morning, you just text two things you're stoked about today. It could be reading something, it could be doing something, like whatever, but we're not going to give that to you. And that autonomy is going to drive people way further. It's kind of like for managers, their default mode of management should be questions, not answers. So not, hey, this is what you do. It's like, what do you think we should do? And you're asking them, and that's what the engagement, whereas before it was just coercement. Now it's engagement. Get them involved. And they're, they're going to want to execute and, and be that accountable person. Because in the past, everyone just assumed human nature was like, fuck work. Work yeah. sucks. But now it's like, no, actually, people want to work. They just want to work on things they care about and have all this autonomy other two. And I think right now something big is happening where more and more people are working remote and it's a huge autonomy thing where you got to walk the dog three times a day or the kids need to go to the, go to the doctor at 2.30 in the afternoon. Like you're still going to get what you need to get done. This is something I'm, I'm wrestling with right now because autonomy. Okay. We went over like what, when, who, how. It's basically like figure out your task when you're doing it, like time, team technique that's what they call it but um but so i'm figuring out like time there is that point where you want people online at the same time so you can talk and communicate but at the same time like basically the team right now is like nine to five for the most part or at least the the editing side so they're nine to five and it's nice because i know exactly when they're working or at least in theory working but i guess within that they have some flexibility but it's like this this balance that yeah, you need to Yeah, I was going to say, because we talked about once the reason, or maybe it was David and I, but the reason full-on autonomy is never going to work and the reason people still go back to the office is because like you just need those times to line up. Let's say I manufacture underwear. Like I need to be able to talk to the manufacturer between nine and five. You know, and for a long time, even in college, like you worked 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Like the world would come to I mean, now I'm kind of doing that. The world would come to a screeching halt. You know, he's spitting on my microphone. <laughs> oh, right Can we go on to number two? Number give two. Me a hint, give me a hint. Give me a hint. Give me a hint. Autonomy. What, what are these three numbers? You want to be. Yeah. No, master. master. Yes. Yes, master. Yes, baby. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what is that game called? I just beat that. Uh, we just played it this past week. Guess who? <laughs> we just played Guess Who this past week. What did we play? I oh, taboo. taboo. That's boom. all we did. We have nothing to do in our apartment. We still don't have a couch. We still don't have a tabby, uh, TV. I can't. But we played Taboo all weekend. That was fun. Our trash can right now is a cereal box. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're all like going home it's after actually, this week. I'm like shoving, shoving my food wrappers into the cereal box. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sh- and it's not a Costco cereal box. <laughs> So it's a whole it's not family size. Kashi, it's like Kashi, like Belky size. Yeah, it's, it's really belky. small. Yikes! So mastery, you got it. We smashed last night. What did we? Smash? What did David call them? Oh. Lizzie's. We got hot dogs. Uh, Lizzie's. And- I couldn't. I couldn't eat mine. I saw what it did to you, and I couldn't. <laughs> you were just gassing up a storm the whole night. Oh no! Oh my! <laughs> mastery. Let's talk about mastery. Help. There, some people. I don't get it. Okay, this is my qualm with people. You got to find something that no. you just want to master. Yeah, it's a qualm, but also like, I don't give a shit. I don't but care. But why don't people care about, like, I love jujitsu. I'm watching jujitsu uh-huh. videos, even though I can't even roll right now. Be- people don't care because they don't have the time because they're doing something they don't want to be doing. You get home. That's a big catch 22. I don't like it's it. It's the biggest catch 22 of all time. You need unemployment for six months. <laughs> Actually, that was such a huge, I was telling someone yesterday, it's such a huge Silver lining from this thing is I was a freelancer for the year and I, I got to, I had the ability to get on unemployment and that was like 
the catalyst, that's the reason you're here. That's the reason the pod's here. That's the reason the workshop is like this. That's the reason I moved downtown. Talk about fortune. Uh, doing things out of a necessity. And when you have your nine to five, you have your job, there's no need to do anything. There's no need to do anything from 6 p.m. to one in the morning to, to have a side hustle. There's just no need. Like, yeah, people, my dad's always texting me like shows to watch on TV, which is cool, but I just don't really watch, like other than Queen's Gambit right now, just because I- <laughs> Which you watch religiously. Yeah. Multiple reasons why. But at, like, for example, take Queen's Gambit. Look at that. Look at that. Queen's Gambit. You're not making that much money off a of chest in the 60s. Exactly. She just, pretty much everyone in the chess world, except for like the very, very top level, is just doing it because they, they love the pursuit of math. Like, can you be a grand master? It's a cool name. <clears throat> That's a cool name. Wait, I saw someone yesterday. I was reaching out to them and they had grand master in their, in their bio. I don't know who it was. It was a podcaster. James Altucher, maybe? Oh, yeah. Is he yeah. grand master? Yeah. Look at that. Anyway, mastery. What? Yeah. Well, the idea is like, okay. And even in the show, I guess you haven't really watched it. Well, you saw the drug part. Like they're trying to achieve this flow state of like, you're, you're just so in the moment. And that's what this podcast is. A lot of the time for us is just like, I have no idea what's going on with time for the most part. Sometimes we'll check, but like, there are those times where you're just like so invested in it and everyone knows what it feels like. It's like, how can you maximize that flow? And that's well, about deep work. And stuff. But oh, yeah. just like have work that gets you fucking jazzed up to do it. Like I'm excited to go through edits and like see what we can create. That gets me going. I watched my YouTube video like seven times today. There's no reason I have Get to do that. the biggest egos in town for the <laughs> 50 views. I don't almost. know. I don't know. I think part of it's like, cause I didn't edit it. I'm so surprised by how mm. great it looks. It's like watching a different person. So I love frame. I just put my, it's the editing software yeah. for like comment software. Just leave my little comments. And then tomorrow, I it's a masterpiece. Team makes a, a dope edit. And I'm like, oh my god, what does that so, have to do with mastery? Well, mastery is like to be a master, you have to have these repeated flow states over time. Mm, yeah, and that's the only way you're gonna get really great at anything. And there's there's this grit element sometimes. One gets tough, and you gotta like persevere. But I don't know if people just give well, up or they just don't. No, they don't give what up. Again, like if you have a nine to five and you have a significant other and you have a dog or you live with friends, like. There's just no time. There's no need to make time to learn a new trait, to master something, to get stoked about like anything. I think that's so, it's so essential though for being actually successful. Like you, to break the chains of like making average salary and like just being an average person, you need to just push it. Oh, that was my qualm. Okay. Average. Okay. Everyone, I hear this a lot. And this, this uh, comes from my book. I never remember the title. Nassim Taleb. Oh, 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 oh. The one we were going to read? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, whatever. We'll get to it. Rational one. optimist. No, no different. Rationally one. Okay. Look at me. Anti-fragile? So the, the idea, no. The idea is, it's the one Nick Conus recommends. Got that episode. But basically like, <laughs> quick plug. 50%. Uh, they're like, average, right? 50% of people are above average. 50% of people are below average. Oh, yeah. That's not true. 50% of people are above average or like 50% are below. How is that not true? Maybe that's true. My <laughs> point is like, uh, say salary. Like if you want an above average salary, only half of people can get that. Hold on. I'm so slow. Okay. If you want an above average salary. Say the, the median salary in the U.S. is $50,000. Okay. Only half of people can have a salary above. That. Okay. And half of people have a salary below. That. Seems true. What, because of the weights of their salary? But you said median. Yeah, the weights. But you said median. No, the average. No, you just said median. Well, the, you said the median salary is 50 grand. I don't think I said... We got to check the tapes <laughs> check on Check the that. tapes. You said median. Maybe I did. So... Well, the, okay, that's the difference. The difference is average, or which is mean, and median. Okay. So everyone's like, oh, uh, only half of people can make above average salary. Well, what if you have, whatever, Bezos, and then he's, he carries it up so high that most people... The majority of people make below average. Yeah. It's just a little interesting. But you can yeah. have it the reverse direction too. Like most people make above average salary, but a couple people drag it down. So your point is most people are... I heard it in the book. Daniel Pink was like, um, whatever, the, you want an above average salary, only half of people can get it. So just like work to be in that top half. Okay. 
And I'm like, that's not true. Because based on the weights that we just talked yeah, about. Yeah, I'm confused. Oh, oh, mean or median. This but I, I get the sentiment. means nothing. I get the sentiment. But, but we'll have a book <laughs> on whatever the hell this thing is called that I always forget the name. All right, mastery. That's it. Sorry to like throw a wrench in your... your Did that have to do with mastery, the salary thing? Uh, well, are, are you just saying people are comfortable because they think they make either above mean salary or below it? Uh, no, there wasn't a real big point here. It's just a, a nice. pet peeve that I now have okay. where people think like, oh, to make above average means like you got to be in the top 50. Or like, well, but doesn't I'm going to give up above median. Yeah. Well, We'll do this. We'll 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 do that point another to. time. And that's why the pod's important because that's it's like this monkey thought in your head. It's probably true. It's, it's a real monkey thought. <laughs> it's probably true, and it takes something like this to figure out how to fill in the gaps in that reasoning. All right. So, and so now we're writing things. Yeah. So you you get the av- oh, this is the average it. right here. Yeah. You get one Nobody dude can it up. see this. Yeah. But all these people, ninety percent of people, are below average. They're below this line. Yeah. And. So most people make below average wages. Yeah. Where does that get us? Nowhere. It's, it's just a pet peeve. It's Hell fun. yeah. What's that? <laughs> What's All right. Did three? we lose everybody? Okay. We're on a step number three. Do you know that one? I just put up the give grossest me a <laughs> give, me a, give me a hint. Give me a hint. Three. No, don't look. Give me a hint. Yeah, explain it. The, the blank puppy. Darfur? <laughs> That's a different writer. That's a different article. The Darfur puppy. <laughs> What? Wasn't that what? 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 Wasn't that the fucking? It's a Nick Kristoff article. I thought, or Tom Friedman. Weren't they like all dying? Wasn't that place in Africa? Yeah, maybe. It's about how to get things. And you tell I the story with the little Darf Darfur puppy. What's the other hint? Give me another hint. Um, it's only terrible if you say it's terrible. How to find your I'm blank puppy? A, I'm having a ball. Passion. No. Purpose. Purpose. It's purpose. You're, you wrote a blog. You tried to write a blog I tried post to. about I was thinking puppy. Actually, I was thinking about intrinsic motivation. I'm like, I'm kind of intrinsically motivated now. Before, I was like, I'm putting this out because it's going to be my career. But I kind of just want to put this out because we reference it so much and I've never published it. The blog? Oh, that and the, that the Mission Mountain. We, I, I have that written on the whiteboard. We got to talk about what climbing Kilimanjaro taught us about life as a hierarchy. Okay. Purpose, puppy? Purpose. Purpose. Pur- it's just yes. purpose. It's like you it's go into work defeat. and I, I'm, I'm concerned with this because I'm like, I don't know if the team, uh, my team in particular, just thinking, being selfish, but like, I don't know how clear my purpose is and like if they're on board with that or if they're just doing it because it's a job. But like, I, I don't even know. I don't have it solidified in my own head, but it's just like, I think it's mostly like challenging norms. Like that's, that's my big guiding purpose mm-hmm. is like all these crazy norms whether they're like social financial true or untrue what other health related just a lot of stuff that i think people just have wrong and i want to break them down and ones i work with the dating company it's like the social side and it's like financial and we kind of talk about that here i think there are a lot of just norms that are silly like or being like being casual for example one of the video editors paulo i'll shout him out he's He's dope and he was calling me sir and he's kind of getting away from it. But I'm like, hello, like literally Henry just ripped ass on our last call <laughs> talking about editing. Like this is literally That's, the, the yeah. biggest, like we're serious, but we're not. What I was, what I was saying is like, Paolo, um, you cannot be calling Dylan sir if you see our Sunday meetings with the crew. I'm usually on the floor like We can't even go in the same the room giggles. anymore. Yeah, I mean. Unless... Well, the Wi-Fi is not good. We enough just we don't have. take the world that seriously, so, or we don't take ourselves that seriously. And I hope the team also doesn't take themselves too seriously. But that's a that's a. I don't know thing. why. Like, maybe it gets back to that like two point thing of like traditional leadership is like you have to reward or punish, and so sir, yes, sir, like this, this like you're just punished and you kind of have this status game. Whereas like I, I just want to be the person that like pays your bills. And then we're equals from there. Yeah. David and I have this funny uh, dichotomy where he's in and from that world of formality. And I'm so ridiculously informal, like it's painful. 
And so we're, we're like going back and forth on copy that I'm like, you just got to take ourselves less seriously. And he's like, no, it has to be this. I'm like, let's just come up with goofy names, goofy like uh, uh, executive names within the team. He's like, no, I have to be a, a CEO. Like in my mind, I'll, I'll perform. Like the world's too. I, I almost, I want to, granted, you know that I'm like, oh, I was going to get to that matrix before. But I'm what like, matrix? you know what we were talking about on a run? A run where there's like, yeah, that was a great there's dumb run. people, smart people, and there's hard workers and lazy people. We walked all the way home. We're lazy. That was my fault. But like, you're a person. Wait, wait, wait. So there's, there's so four types of people. Oh, no one's going to watch this deep, but maybe we'll put up a matrix Yeah, they on will. There's four types of people, right? Well, there this is, is, this is like our running thoughts. But in theory, there's like hard no, workers. someone said this. I made this up. No, somebody said this. No, I made this up. I don't know, pop. Carry on. There's hard workers and lazy people. Or like hard, I don't know how to find you hard. can You can be you work hard, hard working or lazy. And lazy. No, you can Wait a minute. It's hard working, smart. Hard working, lazy. No, smart. Oh, I'm just trying to draw the <laughs> matrix. Okay, you have dumb. hard and lazy and you have smart and dumb. Okay, and so you have every combination yeah. there. So like, for example, okay, you are, you're probably on the dumb spectrum, but hardworking. Or do you think the opposite? I'm trying to classify. No, we said. Are you smart and lazy? We said I'm smart. Oh, you're both. You're both. We you're said awesome. I'm smart, hard. No, that's not awesome. That's not necessarily awesome. I'm hard. <laughs> I'm hardworking and smart. That sounds pretty awesome. No, because it's like input output stuff. Like it's work, no, work, it's, work. It's, it's the way you work. The smart, lazy person figures out how to make money in their sleep. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that I think is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then there's hardworking, dumb. Which I used. Which you're just, well, we don't have to name names, which but you're I just, you're, you're running in place. And then there's, why is this so hard right now? And then there's, there's lazy and dumb. And those are the worst people in the world. You don't want to be a because they just don't strong. do anything. Yeah, so I think like part of my problem is um that was I'm tough. Smart. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we never really thought this one through. I wrong it on okay, you. Okay, but, but but the idea is like I'm lazy, like I don't I don't quite have the Dunbar mission, like I don't at least not yet. I don't want to impact the world. I don't want this global scale stuff. I just want to like figure out my own life and then maybe later on I'll kind of work on other things. Right. But your Hardworking in the sense that you want to grow Dunmar to be the largest, biggest company like a Facebook. Yeah. And so it's doing it in a, a smart way where you're trying to like focus on the big picture and have everyone else <clears throat> yeah. do your work. It's just so interesting because you've got everybody we talk to wants to pay for this. This is really system, crazy. And it's dangling in front of your face and you want nothing to do with it, which is beautiful. You just don't care. Talk about intrinsic motivation. <laughs> and David and I are like, dude, we can sell this thing. Let's go. I need to pay for lunch. <laughs> I know. I can already buy my own lunch. So I'm like, I you're such a basic needs person. It's smart, lazy. You're like, I just, I don't want to sell all evening. I'd like to just I've been get in bed and watch for years, Gambit. All I really want is just a place in downtown New York. You should Some save friends. up. Yeah. Well, I can't. Yeah. But those dumb, lazy people. Look at no, that. No, 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 no. Come talk to us. No, I don't think they have it. Oh, I'm more concerned about the dumb, hard people. Who well, are actually well, dumb. Well, that's... I say dumb, but they're working in a dumb way. Like, they could be working... Yeah, this is not really intelligence-based. No. It's a little bit, but... Like, the, it's, it's more so a leverage argument than mm -hmm. anything. It's like, is it... That's why I think this came from the ball. I don't, I think, I, maybe, maybe I'm just copying. Maybe but yeah, a lot of what we talked about in this episode is those people that are really hardworking, but dumb. Or are working. Dumb. And not, I don't. are working dumb. Sorry, not to say that they're not smart or they're idiots. Yeah, well, we didn't really qualify this till too late. <laughs> right, <laughs> so someone late. hears These the matrix and they're gone. Um, not even working dumb, just not, not ever assessing why they're doing this doing this thing that's what it is we we talk about this so much 
It's like if you're doing finance, whatever, um, have you sat down for an hour and figured out why you're doing ah, that? I like this. Okay. This connects back to the book. All right. So it's, talking- it's so funny. I say a point and it's either like the podcast is going to end <laughs> or you're excited about something else. <laughs> and I'm glad you found something. In Here there. I found it. So it's talking about compensation. Right? How do you pay your employees or as an employee, like what pay should you want? And, and the basic idea is take money off the table as much as you can. Like the pay should be the right level where it's like fair based on the market rate. Call it on, median, yeah. whatever. Stay away <laughs> from that argument. Not even. No. <laughs> so basically just like pay the right amount. And sometimes it's hard to like figure out where that is, but like make your life comfortable. Like right now you're concerned about lunch, but like in straight general, up, straight up. Like we need to recognize I have awesome safety nets, <laughs> but I, if that were my plan B, then I would fall back on them. And I'd probably never do anything. Mm. I am straight up concerned about eating lunch. And I like that pressure. Oh. <clears throat> What'd you think well, I was going to say? I don't know. It's kind of funny and sad. I'm glad you like it. I, it was kind of sad for It's a, a little sad. It's a little sad. Oh, my, my, my. Like, I so had to eat your I, tamale I last night. I thought I was... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where'd my tamale go? There's a I little nibble up for me. I don't have much, man. <laughs> <laughs> going through the cereal box trash for I food. I don't have much. <laughs> but my, because I, I, I put a story out on Instagram of your bed and like <sighs> you didn't have sheets on it because you were doing your laundry, but it just looked terrible. You were sprawled out. And my brother messaged me. He's like, get the kid a pallet. <laughs> like one of those wooden things to keep shit elevated. Yeah. Again, it's voluntary simplicity. I don't think I've ever been happier in my life. It's debatably you know? voluntary at this point. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but the point is like, no, unless it's by choice and like, it's cool. Like, I, I think we like this vibe. Like, we haven't turned on the heat. We just like it. It's, it doesn't make <laughs> I sense got the gas busy. bill today. It was, it was more expensive than really? I would have thought. Yeah, 50 bucks for October for two weeks. 15 bucks a person? 50, oh, 50, uh, five zero. Whatever. No, I know. I was just kind of upset because our electric, we did good. 20 bucks. And uh, we haven't turned the heat on. Are you not going to be able to eat tonight? <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, I don't know if I can pay my credit cards <laughs> December 1st. All right. So basically, like, try and compensate to that level. Like, you want to get to the level where you're not concerned yeah. about can you eat? Yeah. Like, do you have a bed? Do you have, like, even beyond that, like, you shouldn't be concerned about money as much as possible. Um, well, that's, yeah. And s- that's just, like, a terrible thing about the world is that so many people are. I was going to bring up, okay, so Beery was on the podcast. I guess we released that already in theory, but he was talking about how like hiring, outsourcing work is immoral. And I'm like, well, no, because I think I can provide for several people's Oh, families. should we talk about unemployment and how the math just doesn't, doesn't add up? People need to take econ. The unemployed, like giving unemployment to people? Like, you just can't have it both ways. This is what happens when we, we don't have a podcast for like a week. No, and we, have all we these need to do this talks. right now. All right. Look, in society today, you cannot have it both ways. You cannot give a very generous minimum wage and also expect unemployment rates to go down further. Oh, you're getting into Thomas Sowell shit. I guess. Sure. I mean, it's literally Econ 101. Turn that shit off. Get, get your phone out of here. John Fensler? Did he hear you talking about Barry? I haven't talked to this kid in two years. Why do you think he's calling And he's calling randomly FaceTiming me? Hold on. Let me... I guess. Tell him we're on a podcast. Pensler, we are on a podcast. This, this can't be done. You're going to be in episode 79. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. I'll see you. Right, he must have heard hey, Barry or let's something. Go. Or no, it's not out yet. Uh, oh, what was I saying? Unemployment. Da, 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 uh, da, da. Basically, you like you can't have... Oh, the, 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 the argument for outsourcing, right? Like, let's say you wanted to produce this podcast and you were paying minimum wage and it's $15 an hour. I mean, you can't even afford to hire one American to do that. Nor do I want to. No, yeah, fucking Americans talk about, okay. Dude, okay, so Dumb here, lazy. Let's get into, yeah. Dumb lazy. Everyone's like, Dylan, how are you executing? I'm like, one, I'm not even executing. Like, it's literally my awesome team over in the Philippines and Singapore, like we're, we're just 
everyone's just a workhorse. And we're just, I don't know how intrinsically motivated they are. Maybe it's, I, I hope there's some intrinsic motivation. That's what I want to strive to. But it's like, they're crushing it. And then everyone that I know in America, like. Just don't do shit. Don't show up. Don't say they're not going to show up. Just don't do anything. Um, and so I take the utilitarian point of view, which is to say, like, you can pay six people in the Philippines far over median uh, income, which is six lives you're touching. Um, and God knows how many lives they're each touching versus what you could employ a quarter of an American, which you can't. So I just, I, yeah. Utilitarian in the sense that everyone's better I off. Think, I think what happens is people go to college, they hear these things, they get to the real world. It's not the real world. How the heck did this come up? Um, I Beery. don't really know. What, what about Beery? Why I... do you say it's immoral? Because he thinks Cause... he thinks outsourcing, he associate, associates outsourcing with paying them low wages in their country. Yeah. Yeah, it's fair trade. No, yeah. Like, I, I don't actually know the average or medium wage I there. looked it up. But confidently, confidently over, far I over. I hope. Let me know if not. Yeah, right. I want to make sure everyone's eating. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess we can summarize it, right? Motivation has changed over the course of history. 1.0, just survive. 2.0, punish, reward. 3.0, intrinsic motivation. How do you get intrinsic? Well, you have one, autonomy. Two, mastery. Three, purpose. Wow. I didn't even look down. That means you know it, I think. Isn't that... Well, maybe well, okay. I just crammed the shit if out of this people book. made it this far, leave a review. Tell us how we're doing. Say, say some. Say They're going to be nice. like, I came for a book review, and I don't know what kind of. <laughs> and we're talking about shit. libertarian bullshit. Thanks for thanks for sticking sticking with us. That was a lot of fun. That was Drive by Daniel Pink. And uh, like I said at the beginning of this pod, maybe this pod is one of those cases. But if you took nothing else from that book, like more or less, I did. Intrinsic, intrinsic motivation is the key to life. It's the key to innovation. It's the key to output. Um, find it. If you don't have it, you can find it. Yeah. I think we both found it. And Oh, you know what I want to do? Yes! It was at the end of the book. Um, or was it in something else? I don't know, but I want to hold office hours. Oh, that was in the book. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to have office hours like for my YouTube channel, for entrepreneurs, whatever, like Saturdays or Sundays. I'm going to drop a Calendly link and people can sign up. And if you don't know your intrinsic motivation, like hit me up. If you do, or if you think you fall into that category, if you fall into any of those four matrices that, that we talked about, well, it's one matrix, but are four you going to be giving advice? No, just hanging out. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That they're was gonna, episode 79 of my, Podcast. Bye. Uh, they're going to see me on my pallets. You don't want my advice. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Later. <laughs>